So this might be a decent fish if I don't lose him. Yes! Holy smokes! When it comes to higher end bladed jigs, you're probably familiar with the Z-Man Jackhammer and also the Strike King Thunder Cricket. But did you know there's a new higher end bladed jig in town? trying to steal the hammer from Z-Man and also the thunder from Strike King? We're going to give you a look at it and side-by-side -side comparisons right here, only here, on Live to Fish. Hey everyone, welcome back to Live to Fish and today we're going to talk about bladed jigs. But not any bladed jigs, we're talking about the high-end ones. The ones that you really don't want to spend a lot of money on because, well, let's face it, they're expensive and the toothy critters might take them. But never fear, I got links to some great deals, and I'll tell you what, they're worth every penny. Let's get into it. Yep, that's a fish. Get to use my new net. All right. Sweet. Thanks to my subscriber, uh, Aldo, for the new net. Appreciate that. And that's not the only net he got me. And I'll show you that later on in the season. For right now, let's take a look at this fish. Ooh, there we go. Beauty. This one's on the slobber knocker. We're going to show you what the slobber knocker is all about. All right, let's talk about the higher end bladed jigs for a second. And what usually comes to mind is the Strike King Thunder Cricket or the world famous Z-Man Jackhammer. Both of these are really good higher end bladed jigs. Um, the great thing about these is they're worth every penny because when you launch these things out there, to get them started up, you don't need to give it a good rip like you do with some of the uh, lower end ones. The action starts immediately. There's a new kid in town and it's right about the same price point, right around $14. It's the Berkeley Slobber Knocker. Now this is a bladed jig, but it's not your typical bladed jig. Let me zoom in here so you can see some of the subtle differences. And I'm gonna take it out of the package in case you didn't see it, and we'll get a closer look. Let's go. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the Slobber Knocker in action. And also, if you're new to the channel, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to smash that like and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what products you'd like to see reviewed or revealed here on Live to Fish. Follow it right up. All right. All right, another one for the slobber knocker, another one for the RLDL bladed bait challenge. Let's get him measured up. I don't think he's going to measure up, but it's another number. 16. Sweet 16, baby. So there's another one on the slobber knocker for you. The trailer I'm using is a very, very small little fluke, and it's working really well. I needed something really small. So you'll notice the blade on here is a little bit different than your traditional uh, bladed jigs. But let me show you the big difference between the slobber knocker and the traditional bladed jigs. Now at first glance you might think, well this is just another bladed jig. Well actually it's not. It's a lot different in design than the other two bladed jigs. Take a look at the way this thing is mounted. So you can see it's kind of a hinge there. Let's take a look at the Z-Man Jackhammer by comparison. All right, so we're gonna compare side by side the Z-Man Jackhammer against the Berkeley Slobber Knocker. And at first glance, you can kind of see the Berkeley Slobber Knocker up here has a little bigger profile. Now here's the Z-Man Jackhammer to the right and a head-to-head -head comparison with the Slobber Knocker off to the left. You can see that it's not as profoundly bent on the Jackhammer. Although it is a little bit more than, say, the Thunder Cricket, but still not as profound as you see the bend here on the blade on the Slobber Knocker. Here's a head-to-head -head comparison on the side view. You can see that the Slobber Knocker, you'll see that the Slobber Knocker has that hinge in there connected to the jig head, which is connected to the blade. And on the Z-Man Jackhammer, it's simply on an eyelet on the jig head. Two totally different ways to mount it and also two different results when it's running through the water. Now for the side by side by side comparison, you have the Thunder Cricket, you have the Slobber Knocker, and you have the Jackhammer. Here we're gonna take a look at the Thunder Cricket. Again, the blade is not as pronouncedly bent, gives a little bit of vibration, but not as much as you'll get with the Slobber Knocker. Let's take another close look at that Slobber Knocker blade. You can see just how pronounced that blade is. Between the bend on the blade and that hinge, on the head of the jig, 
this thing gives off a lot of vibration. You can also see from this comparison that the Thunder Cricket and the Jackhammer both have about the same profile. The Slobber Knocker comes in a little bit longer, a little bit beefier with the skirt. I'll be honest with you, there's a time and place for each one, but the Slobber Knocker is slowly becoming my favorite. Now, I know there's been somebody that has uh, messaged me in the past and said, hey, I've been watching your videos. I watch the way you reel in and I try to copy your cadence and try to learn what you do to catch fish. And that's a great technique, but you need to know what the reel that I'm using is as far as the gear ratio and how fast or slow it runs to catch fish like this. This is a six five to one and we got fish on. So what I'm talking about with the reels is this is a 6.5 to one ratio. What that means is on the scale of what I normally use, which is like in the eights, this is something that I have to reel a little bit quicker to get that same action that I would on a faster reel. Again, the higher the ratio, the faster that that line is gonna come back into the spool. So with the slobber knocker, I might run it a little bit faster on the 6.5 to one than I would on say an eight to one. That one I can slow down a little bit because it's a little bit faster. So I apologize in advance to some of you that have been watching my techniques and seeing how I reel in. I'll try to clarify what the gear ratio is that I'm using better in the future. Thanks for the feedback. Now let's get back to some fishing. Right. I'm watching the eagle with the fish behind me and I got fish on over here and it just pulled the drag. So this might be a decent fish. If I don't lose him. That's a good fish. Yes! Holy smokes! All right, so there's the fish I just caught, but there's an eagle down there that's sitting in the water that caught a fish. It's a bald eagle. That's crazy. He's chowing over there. And I just got this sucker. Awesome. That's pretty cool. And again, that was trolling that slobber knocker. Good deal. Let's get him unhooked, get him measured up. All right, so trolling with the slobber knocker, got on another one. This one's not bad. It might bump me up just a little bit. I don't know, to be honest with you. I gotta get a date and picture here. Let's measure them up and find out. And one of the biggest mistakes that happens to me happened yet again. I'm catching fish out there and not checking my line and making sure that I retie. And uh, yep, cast out that slobber knocker and it was long gone. So I lost that, went back to the spinner bait and had some success for the RLDL bladed bait challenge and the results of that will be coming up soon. So if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And until next time, be safe, be well, and as always, live to fish. Take care, everybody. Went back to the spinner bait and got me a fish. I got me a nice fish, all right. One more for the RLDO Bladed Bait Challenge.